Okay, SummerSlam 2009, and it wasn't the best SummerSlam I've ever seen. In fact, it probably wasn't even the best Summer Fest I've ever seen. This wasn't very good, but there were really good elements to it. Okay, the opener for a start, Rey Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. That was a great match. It was the sort of match I, I had basically very low expectations for the pay-per-view. I didn't think the pay-per-view would be very good, and... After that op opener was over, I thought, actually, this pay-per-view might be really good. It really got me into it. There followed two hours of shite. I mean, utter shite. It was so boring. It was just, you know, it was just a lot of egos getting their own way. There were a lot of periods of very slow domination. It was boring. The crowd were really into it, but I don't know why. It was terrible. Then the main event comes and it started off kind of slow. And I thought, oh god, here we go again. Another terrible match. But then it got good. But then it got really good. Then it got really, really good. And Jeff Hardy did the swanton from the top of the biggest ladder through the announce table, the spot we've wanted to see for ages. And I was like, oh, this is great. This is going to turn into a great match. There's still 10 minutes left. And then it just ended. I didn't get this at all, right? Because they both climbed to the top of the ladder and CM Punk just punches Jeff Hardy in the ribs and Jeff Hardy falls to the floor, CM Punk gets the title. What? This made no sense, right? The whole basis of this feud, the feud between CM Punk and Jeff Hardy, is that CM Punk believes Jeff Hardy is a bad role model, and he believes the only way um, to stop people from following um, this false god, if you like, is uh, to obliterate him, to utterly destroy him, to do something so despicable, so devious, so decisive. Basically, this TLC match was calling out for an absolute killer spot at the end where CM Punk just killed Jeff Hardy. I mean, seriously, the kind of spot where you're just like, oh my god, is Jeff Hardy dead? That's what this required, particularly if this is Jeff Hardy's last match in the WWE for now. That's what this match required. But no, it was just a punch in the ribs. I didn't get that. I thought that was bad. There were some good things, there were some bad things. Let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. Okay. The opener is the Intercontinental title match between Dolph Ziggler and Rey Mysterio. Now, I didn't have very high expectations for this because I, I thought their last match was pretty terrible. And people have said they had good chemistry. I thought they had really bad chemistry. Um, so I didn't have high expectations for this as an opener. I didn't think it'd get the crowd into it. I was totally wrong. This match was awesome. This match was really awesome. And it was one of those unfortunate things where before the match, I would have said, I want Rey Mysterio to win. Dolph Ziggler isn't ready yet. So I think they actually made the correct decision by having Rey Mysterio win because I don't think he was ready. But halfway through the match, I was like, oh my God, Dolph Ziggler is ready. Please put the title on him. Because Dolph Ziggler outperformed Rey Mysterio in this match and no one outperforms Rey Mysterio. He was awesome. The crowd got really behind him in the middle. They were like, let's go Ziggler. And I was like, oh, this is the moment Ziggler has to go over. And it was just one of those unfortunate things because you never know when the moment's going to be when someone just clicks with the crowd and you should give them a belt. Um, but this really was the moment and unfortunately they kept the title on Mysterio. Uh, but it's not that bad. I suppose Ziggler can win another time. Anyway, this was a really good match. Lots of really nice high spots in this. Um, at the start we had... Ziggler throw Mysterio onto the top rope. Mysterio delivered a perfect moonsault. That was beautiful. We also had a bit where in the middle where Mysterio went for a springboard crossbody and Ziggler met it with a drop kick. That was great. Um, Mysterio hits the 619, goes for the big splash, misses, and Dolph Ziggler does a rather beautiful sort of pinning combination, which I thought was going to be the win, but it wasn't. Um, Ziggler hit some nice moves in this, some really nice moves. His gut buster, a sort of power bomb into the turnbuckle, uh, he does sort of running famasser, if you like. Um, end of the match comes, Ziggler goes for his gut buster from the second rope, which is a great move, but it didn't get the pin on Mysterio last time, so I thought it was kind of odd for him to choose to do that, you know, because surely the illusion they're trying to create is that Ziggler was just about to win this match and then Mysterio nicks it off him. I thought it was an odd choice. Anyway, Mysterio hits a really nice Hurricane Rana, I quite like the finish. I like that Mysterio didn't win with just with this finisher. This was nice. Mysterio wins. Um, then we have a Swagger MVP interview backstage. 
this was really good. This just showed how good MVP is on the mic, where he was comparing himself with Swagger and how Swagger wrestled so he could win a trophy and MVP fought so he could survive for another day. This proved how good MVP was. And in the middle of it, Swagger said, we all know MVP is just a stepping stone uh, for my greatness, which is what we all feared MVP would be. Uh, but it doesn't prove the case, because the next match is MVP versus Jack Swagger. And Cole introduces this as an opportunity to catapult themselves into the main event. And hopefully, that's what this is. Um, this wasn't a great match, though. This was quite short. I don't think they have very good chemistry. I've seen both of them wrestle better matches against other opponents. Um, I thought Swagger would go over. But I was glad MVP went over, because Swagger's got far more time. Not a great match. Okay. Um, MVP wins clean with the playmaker. Then we have Big Show and Jericho versus Crime Time uh, for the Unified Tag Team Championships. This match was sort of okay. You know, I just hate I hate the way they booked this. The Big Show and Jericho making Big Show look invincible, making Jericho look really weak. It's just ridiculous, particularly as the crowd proved in this match. The only person the crowd cared about once again was Chris Jericho. They didn't give a shit about anyone else. They really did. They couldn't care less about crime time. The only person that was getting chanted for and cheered for was Chris Jericho. Um, this match was okay. I suppose it was almost exciting towards the end. We had the period where Shad dominated Chris Jericho, which I didn't like. Then the Big Show came in and easily dominated Shad. And then as soon as Chris Jericho came back in, Shad got back into the match and was able to tag JTG. I just hate the way this is booked. Um, JTG gets a very near fall on Chris Jericho uh, after a roll up. Like it was a, I thought it was actually three, and I was like, oh my god, crime time of one. Jericho just got pinned by JTG again, uh, but fortunately it was two and three quarters allegedly. And then the end of the match comes. Jericho puts JTG in the walls of Jericho. JTG gets the ropes and Big Show knockout punches him, and Jericho picks up the victory. It was okay. Uh, then we have Punk promo talking about this screenplay of Jeff Hardy's life, um, and basically the end of the story allegedly was that Jeff Hardy was going to beat CM Punk, and he said he was going to rewrite the ending, and it was going to be gruesome, and it wasn't going to be pretty at all. What happened to that theory? Because, once again, that supports my idea that Punk should have done something despicable at the end of the match. Punk should have killed Jeff Hardy at the end of the match. He should have done something outrageously spectacular. Anyway, then we had Kane versus the Great Cali. This was fucking terrible. But everyone knew this was going to be terrible. I mean, this is no surprise. Why did they put this on pay-per-view? This was so slow. When Kane is the most athletic person in the match, your match is fucked. Your match is seriously fucked. And this match was awful. We had basically Cali doing his very unconvincing striking and then no selling everything Kane did. Then we had Kane dominate for a period, uh, you know, where he just locked on a reverse chin lock for about three and a half minutes. Then Kane pulled. Ranjan Singh in the ring, which allowed him to hit a low drop kick and a DDT for the win. Um, I'm glad Kane won. I'd rather Kane win the match than great, the Great Khali, but this is just this is not worth pay per view time. And when you bear in mind what happened later, uh, when you bear in mind the fact that MVP Swagger wasn't given enough time, um, particularly the ECW Championship match wasn't given any time at all. They wasted about seven minutes on these two lumbering oafs making fools out of themselves. This was terrible. Anyway, turn over to part two, where we'll discuss DX, the ECW Championship, WWE Championship, and the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay.